welcome to another episode of Pit Lane Parlay. Joined right before Friday morning practice by Sage Karam driving the Smart Stop self storage i'm looking at his fire suit so i get that right uh this weekend here in toronto i know you haven't been able to obviously get any practice in before this weekend have you been able to you know do any simulator any eye racing to at least kind of uh you know re-familiarize yourself with the with the street course game well i've done a bunch of eye racing like in the past with the ir18 um on all different types of circuits you know um unfortunately i racing doesn't have toronto you know it's like the one street circuit that you know they they have uh long beach in detroit yeah. so i i drove quite a few laps with this car on those tracks um but yeah i needed toronto and it didn't have it so um <laughs> that was kind of a concern and the last time i drove in toronto was in 2013 um in indy lights yeah. so i didn't even race here in 2015 when i was with ganassi um, so it's been quite a bit, and um, you know they changed the last section since I've been here. Um, it used to be a bit quicker and I think wider as well. Now it's uh, a bit tighter and uh, slower, but it's uh, you know bumpy and off camber, and you know there's a lot of elements to the last section. So that's going to probably be the hardest part of the track for me to figure out since it's new to me. Um, everything else is pretty similar. I did the track walk yesterday. Um, and it was pretty good. And then on Wednesday, before I came here, I was able to actually get down to the Chevrolet simulator in Charlotte, and um, they have Toronto. Um, so I was actually able to run some laps, and Max was there as well. Um, so I got to see how he went about things, and then I got to go in for the rest of the day, the afternoon, and drive that. And it went well, um, but, you know, obviously simulators, there's no fear factor and stuff like that so it's um much i think it's probably a lot easier just to get in a sim and just go 100 percent rather than in real life so i mean it went well on the sim but then again like you don't really know until you actually just get out in the real car and just go do it so um we'll see how it goes you know i think that the team's been really good as far as like keeping expectations in check and you know they've been reminding me like hey listen like we know this has been a long time for you out of the car just go do your thing, go drive, and, um, you know, I, I think um, they understand the circumstances and that this is probably not the most ideal track to make your road course return back at, um, and they understand that. But I think, you know, we're coming into this as a team with this is a stepping stone of, you know, maybe bigger things down the road. So, um, you know, we just got to hope that the weekend goes well and I can do my job to the best of my ability, work with the engineers, the team, help develop the car. And, um, you know, hopefully when things, if things go well and we can parlay it maybe into some more races this year and, and keep growing that relationship and hopefully with smart stop as well, you know, it's good to have new sponsors coming in IndyCar. And, uh, I've been saying, you know, to, I've been getting a lot of interviews this weekend since it's my return. And I've been saying it's good to have a new sponsor in IndyCar, but it's also good when they're associated with me because then I get to go drive. So, um, you know, that, that's the name of the game. And it's been a long time waiting to get back in an IndyCar other than the Indy 500. So um, I'm like a kid in a candy store. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like ready to go. I'm so excited. And, um, you know, it's like, it's like Christmas. It was like Christmas Eve last night. Like I couldn't sleep because I was just like excited for the next day and just to get back in the car and just thinking about things visualizing and I'm trying to just visualize all the right things you know and it's and I'm trying to just get out of my head like you know of anything that I I I don't want to do and stuff like that I'm just trying to think positive and positive thoughts and um you know just visualizing seeing myself doing well and doing good laps and um yeah I'm excited I got my family girlfriend you know managers here and got a good group of people around you got a whole crew up here got a whole crew girlfriend's family came too so i mean we got we got the whole crew and then we got a you know a lot of people from smart stop self storage coming in as well so we got a good little group here and um you know i'm just surrounded by good people that can uh you know keep it nice and calm around here and uh you know keep the keep the focus on the task at hand you've been in a lot of situations where you've jumped into different cars at the at the last minute um is the challenge, the bigger challenge, the team or 
the track or what what's the biggest challenge of the weekend in a situation like this for you yeah i mean i've done definitely I, i've done things where i've jumped in random cars random times i mean even like when i raced arx you know it was something i've never raced dirt or anything like that and i jumped into that and first time i drove dirt was race weekend so i had to learn that quickly and and you know we got second place in both races and that was fun you know and i'm missing rounds three and four this weekend and that as well so you know i'm kind of falling behind in the points there but um you know i I think dennis wants me to go do the remaining of that season because i don't think there's any type of conflicts with anything else so that'll be fun to go do that again um you know and i've done uh when i was at ganassi i've jumped into prototype cars and and stuff like that at random tracks and um picked up on it pretty pretty good i think for the most part um this will be the hardest challenge out of anything i've done just because um the indie car is a different type of animal. It's not easy. It's it's very very difficult to drive at the top level in it. Um, it takes full commitment and um, full trust in the car to be able to do that. And um, you know, to get that, you you need to to know it. And, and I don't know it. You know, I don't know the limits of it or or anything really for that matter for road course racing with this this car. So it's gonna be the first session. You know think everybody's only got one set of tires really for the first session that they'll use but you know unfortunately I won't get the most out of my new tires my my new tires I'm going to go out I'm probably going to do 10 to 20 laps figuring the place out you know and and then by the time I feel yeah you know a little bit comfortable and able to open it up a little bit you know the tires are pretty much going to be gone so you know we're not going to be probably anywhere this first session but more or less this session's just getting the bearings under you and and uh, figuring everything out and then session two I think will be a better indication of where we stand and then um but yeah the the team they're a newer team um but they're a very very professional and a good team they've been around racing a long time over in Europe as well and they're very very good in Europe um and just from being around the guys and and everything I can tell that this team in you know a year or two is going to be a it's going to be a team that's running up front it, you know they just need some um you know they, they just need you know a driver or two drivers three drivers whatever to that are in you know on board with them for a few years to helping develop and um you know they got to build that you know that, that relationship with each other and i think that will go a long way with them um but they're a great team i you know they've shown speed on road courses i think they are definitely have the road courses a little bit more figured out than the ovals um, but, um, yeah, like I said, they're a team that's not going to stop until they figure it out. So, um, I don't think that is the challenge. I think for me, the challenge is the, the track type. I, I think, you know, I look at it and if I were to pick, you know, road America or this to do my first return back, I would have probably have said road America just because there's a lot of runoff and stuff like that. And you can actually, you, you can go over the limit on purpose just to find what is over the limit well here you can't really do that because there's no really room for error here so um finding a limit here is going to be much 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 more difficult so i'd say the track type is definitely the biggest challenge of this and um yeah i mean we'll see it's there's a lot of question marks really this weekend for me it's and uh i'm just going to be trying to check them off you know one lap at a time one corner at a time and you know one session at a time just getting through everything and and at at a good speed and you know i think even tomorrow there might be a little chance of rain so that'll be fun um the only real good thing about doing it on a track like this is that you know anything happens on these street course races i mean even if you're not um the fastest guy um like you can still do fairly decent on street courses you just keep your nose clean i mean there's a lot of chaos that happens at these things so you just keep your nose clean keep the car running everyone does their jobs i mean you can still come away away with a good result here even if you're not thinking you're going to get a good result early in the weekend so we'll see i mean i i I don't know i I think i'm expecting more of myself than the team is you know and i think that's you know they've they've voiced to me that you know we know the situation we know your circumstance you haven't been in a car in how long and on road course and we know this is going to be very difficult so you need to just go out there at your speed, your pace, and, and learn. And, um, you know, we don't expect in anything crazy. You know, we just want you to go out, 
learn, have fun, and do your thing. And me, you know, I'm a competitor. I've grown up in sports and being a massive competitor my whole life, you know. So it's always like if I'm running 19th, I'm not happy with 19th. I want to be 18th. Then if I'm running 18th, I want to be 17th. And if and do I think I'll be probably towards the bottom of the sheets the first session? Absolutely, you know. But even though I already kind of think that, um, I'm not going to be happy with it when I see it, you know. I'm going to do everything in my power to get up on the sheet, you know. So... Um, but that's just me. That's just, like, what I expect from myself. Um, so I think I expect more from myself than the team does. And, and in that aspect, I think is is actually good when you come into a team where you're not really just, you know, you're not in a Ganassi, you know. And at Ganassi, it was like every time I strapped into that car, it was like you're expected to win, you know. And it's like, so here it's like I'm in a, diff- like a whole different world with my situation right now um, of not, being in the car for so long and um it's actually kind of nice you know and and there's not a lot of pressure and and if anything does happen good like you say i do get in and i do really really well then it's all just a positive for me you know it all just makes it look that much better so um there's really no pressure it's just go out and have fun sounds like a great weekend to me you fought really hard to get to this point you know i'm sure you've been close to uh, other opportunities at, at some point in the past couple of years and does that make this weekend that much sweeter? And how much extra motivation does that give you, you know, that you've gotten to this point, you know, for either the rest of this year or, you know, looking forward to, you know, next year and beyond? Well, I think that plays on the whole me expecting more from myself, which is because I know how long it's been and, you know, you know, people that are on Twitter, or the Internet, and even at the races or teams even, you know, like they don't see what, goes on in a normal day of my life and they don't see you know when we make phone calls to sponsors and we get close and teams you know we're close with and things don't work out so they don't you know nobody sees that they just see I you know I haven't raced and um you know we've been through it all you know we've uh, had a lot of calls that looked really really positive and like things were going to happen then all of a sudden things didn't work out so I mean there's been a lot of times where we've just been like kicked down and um you know, it would have been very, very easy to pack it in and, and go get a job and do something else and, you know, maybe just try and keep going back to Indy one year, but, you know, one race a year. But, you know, even though I've been at Indy for, you know, one race the last four years, even in those four years, I've never just accepted that I'm racing one race a year. I've always, 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 whether come off season, in season, anything, always tried to get more. Um, and, you know, it was just a lot of hard work from a, from a lot of people. And, uh, you know, we finally got it. So, you know, that does add to it. You know, I think that's just like I finally got this opportunity to go show that I belong. It's what I wanted to do. So I want to show that I, I'm here, but I also don't want to look like an idiot as far as, like, doing something that is not possible yet. Sure. So, like, um, trying to keep expectations and reality in check and, and just go do it. It's hard, though, when you're so excited and ready to go and been waiting so long. So, um that's that's kind of the hard part, but uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely plays into the whole effect of everything of you know because of the long wait. So you know, going back a couple months back to Indy, um, obviously that was really hard, you know, for for you and and everybody involved in the team. But um, you persevered, you got in the race, you had a pretty decent day. What do you take away from that experience? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it wasn't a great day for us or a great month. Actually, I mean, pretty much everything that could go wrong that month besides, like, crashing the car, like, went wrong, you know? So, um, the first two days of practice, we didn't really get much time. I got my rookie, or not rookie, but veteran refresher thing out of the way. And then after that, we basically had issues with with the car balance and helmet buffeting, and we didn't really run many laps. And the next day, we had another mechanical issue. Um, that took us out for more than half the day. Um, so then, you know, Indy is no longer a month long. You know, it's not. It's like you got like four days of practice, then you're qualifying. So um, when you miss two days, I mean, it's it's hard. And um, we basically missed two full days and didn't get any qual sims in really um, until Fast Friday. And when you get that extra horsepower, it feels like, you know, you're only – you're only gaining like five mile an hour on the straights, but it feels like you're gaining 500 miles an hour. I mean, it's like massive. And then um, when you get that, and that's going to be your first qual sim, it's kind of sketchy, you know. And if you're not really familiar with 
usually you set the balance of the car in qual trim before you get the horsepower so then it's pretty easy but we didn't get to do that so i only had like one or two qual sims before the qualifying so we had no idea what the car was going to do in qualifying and then obviously the whole ordeal with qualifying happens and we go through those stressful days get it into the show and um then in the race you know we we knew where we were starting we were running at the back and we knew if there was a yellow early we were going to try and come in and top off and maybe make something happen later on in the race but we made the mistake i think of not taking tires when we came in and topped off there were three guys i think that pitted it was me rosenquist and marco and um Marco came out in front of me and I came out in front of Rosenquist and um, they all took tires and I didn't so Rosenquist got around me pretty pretty early and tires were such a big thing at Indy this year and I couldn't get around Marco um, until his new tire life kind of ran out a little bit and equaled out with mine but by then we just kind of lost touch with everybody and um, you know that was kind of what did it for us and it was kind of a weird Indy just because like you know you're used to if you go a lap down at Indy, it's really not a big deal. You'll usually get it back, but we never had an opportunity of getting it back. And, of course, when, like, the one crash happens and turns three and four there, we pit, you know, like, right before that. So, like, instead of, you know, if we stay out one more lap, we get our lap back. But we we didn't, you know, and you can't really. So, basically, everything that could go wrong that, that they did, you know, and, and we could never get our lap back and um, just kind of were stuck. But when we were, you know, when we were, when we got a lap down, I was running with Pagano and Power, and I was literally just running with them. I mean, like, pa Power couldn't pass me, and Pagano wasn't going anywhere, so the car was fast. We just literally got stuck in strategy and couldn't get out of it. So, I mean, it's got nothing to do with the team. It's got nothing to do with how I felt in the car. Um, just an unlucky day, an unlucky month, to be honest with you. And, uh, yeah, I mean, usually I leave that month feeling pretty good, you know. At, like, hey, we showed a lot of speed, a lot of promise. We had a shot to win, but, man, we had... We had nothing that day as far as uh, lady luck on our side, and that took us out of it completely. Well, we're happy you uh, brought the car home in one piece, and you're know, happy to see you back here in Toronto. Best of luck this weekend. You know, we're all we're all pulling for you, and, and uh, see you out at the track. Yeah, it should be good. I can't wait to uh, get this car on track. It looks really, really good too. By the way, it's like you know, it it's bright. Yeah. My suit's bright. I don't think you can miss me. So. Um, <laughs> We'll see how it goes. It's going to be fun. It's, you know, a new sponsor on the side of the car with uh, Smart Stop, Self Storage. So hopefully they have a good time, enjoy it. Um, and I'm glad to, you know, be with a team like Carlin. You know, they're, they're amazing people and uh, just learning every day. And every lap I'll be learning for sure. And, of course, Chevy. You know, it's, this is uh, another IndyCar race with Chevy. I've only ever been in Chevy cars. So i um, excited to keep growing that relationship and uh, get another race under my belt. Best of luck this weekend, man.